Hi folks, my name is Fred. Welcome to my shop. The subject of today's video are counter bores. What are they? What are they used for? And most of all, how do you bake them? Counter bores are used when you when you have cap head screws. Get you in frame here. When you have cap head screws, sometimes you need to recess the head of a cap head screw so that it's at or below the surface. This might be for clearance because something is, is running very close tolerance to this or aesthetically pleasing. Uh, they're expensive. The, the devices to make them are called counter bores. They're relatively expensive. Uh, McMaster Car has them uh, from like $350 to $400 for a set of professional ones. I don't need professional ones. I don't use them that often. But when you need one, you need one. You can get them from Banggood, but they're all metric and I deal mostly in almost specifically in Imperial. So how do, you, how do you work them? How do they work? Well, you drill a clearance hole okay for whatever size bolt we'll, we'll use the 5 16 because it's the biggest one you drill your normal clearance hole and then you take out your your drill for the clearance hole and then you chuck up one of these and this has what they call a pilot on it and that pilot just fits into the the clearance hole and then there's a cutting edge on two cutting edges and you put it in and then bore down to whatever depth you want usually the depth of the cap to give you a nice flat finish uh, but how do you make them well it's really pretty easy I took a set of bits that I had that were no longer serviceable and the first thing I did is I went over to my my uh, stationary grinder and I just ground the tip off and then I chucked it up in a collet in my lathe and I installed a a mini grinder that had a, a stone in it with a square edge and I, I got the lathe running in, rever in back years as slow as it could uh, and then I started up the grinder and then slowly advanced the grinder into the into the bit and then started taking off material and then I kept measuring th this little shank this pilot here and when it got down to oh, a thousandth or two under the outside diameter of, of the the, the uh, cap head screw that I wanted I stopped and then took it out and then using a, a, a diamond file and, a, and the grinder put some relief on the back of this okay so that the cutting tip stood proud of the uh, the rest the rest of the face and then uh, the way you use them is, like I say, you bore a, bore a hole, put this in, chuck it up, and run it down. Now I made uh, six of them for uh, 440, a foot number four, a number six, a number eight, a number ten quarter inch and five sixteenths here it is five sixteenths probably all I'll ever use and if I need a three eighths I'll make one as opposed to buy it so I made all these in about uh, I don't know three hours or so and that's including a mess up that I will show you one of the the five sixteenths, as it turned out, um, I I bore I ground down the pilot too much, 
and when I, after I drilled my, my hole for the clearance, I put it in, and what this thing started to do is walk around inside here, and so it hollowed it out and made a much larger outside diameter. You can see here that there's quite a bit of clearance around here, and that's not what I was after. I was after a fit like that. So I just ground off the, the pilot and did it again. Made it right the second time. Do it right or do it over, right? So that's it. A fun Saturday project. Uh, very satisfying. Doesn't cost a lot. If you have old drill bits, no big deal. And uh, just a mini grinder, which I am sure most, most hobby machinists have. Uh, the one thing I found on this is you want to keep this this uh, angle here dressed at 90 degrees uh, to get a nice crisp inside corner. And what I used for that was uh, a diamond a diamond file. I have a, a selection of these from 60 all the way up to 600. This one's a 240. And I found that if you, while this is spinning, if, if you just touch it, touch the diamond file to the stone, you can dress that corner in a heartbeat. I would, I would definitely wear a respiratory mask when, uh, a dust protection or whatever when you're, when you're using this. Also, eye protection is an absolute must. And if you want to protect your hearing, put in some earplugs because when you grind uh, tool steel on one of these things, I think it goes like 30,000 RPMs, it is loud. And uh, so your hearing protection, eye protection, and when you're grinding a, a dust mask. Well, that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, hope you get you down in your shop to make a set. And I'll be, I'll be making a box for these on uh, the mill, a little wooden box. And I'll have them at my disposal when I need them. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, stay tuned. I got some other fun projects oh, over here. Let me give you a, a quick look. If I can. Let's see. Uh, is that in view? Um, I don't know if this is even in frame. I'll be making videos of uh, my newest stationary steam engine. Come on, where are you? There we go. Making a video of my my newest stationary steam engine. You see that under under power. And I also my my grandson and I made a a can crusher, and I'll be making a, a demo on that. So or making a video on that. So stay tuned. Subscribe if you're interested in this kind of stuff, and thanks for stopping in. Have a good day.